you watch horror movies with other people, there's a sense of comfort and safety. Watching horror movies with a bunch of friends is a bit of fun after all, making even some of the scariest films lose their effect by way of snack crunching and side talk. If you really want to be scared, and I mean like paranoid at bedtime, pulling the duvet over your face so you can't see the darkness kind of scared, it needs to be just you and the screen. Slow burns, dated movies, those horrors that walk the fine line between incredibly unnerving and weirdly funny, all are best appreciated when the lights are low and there are no distractions. And whilst it's true that most horror movies are probably best watched alone, that doesn't mean we can't round up some favourites for a list like this, eh? Whether you like your horror, psychedelic, paranormal, or primed for paranoia when it's just you on your own in the house, these are the watches for your next quiet night in. I am the cinema ticket for one, Ash from What Culture Horror, and these are the 10 best horror movies to watch alone. 10. Nosferatu I hope you're ready to go a little bit old school with this first entry, as F.W. Murnau's 1922 silent classic is essential viewing for any self-described horror fan. It's also just a great movie too. The plot is pretty simple. Man goes to a creepy castle, meets an even creepier dude who turns out to be a vampire, and then bad things start to happen. There's really just one reason why Nosferatu is best watched alone, and that is because it's not the type of movie you watch with a group with it being a silent film and all. Almost ready for its 100 year anniversary at this point, it is an old but gold title that is best enjoyed with your cinematic ear tuned in to a dramatic score and some ghastly visuals. When you watch it by yourself without any distractions, you will quickly be overwhelmed with its brooding, creepy atmosphere. Plus, since it's a classic and everything, solo viewing will also help you be able to appreciate it as a work of art too. 9. Mandy in the wrong hands, art house horror can drift too far into pretentiousness, but that is not the case with Mandy at all. Yes, it is heavily focused on maintaining a hypnotic style through glacial pacing and characters often bluntly ruminating on the nature of existence, but it is also pulpy as hell. Hello, cults and sadomasochistic bikers is probably all I need to say here. The violence on display in Mandy is just barely more over the top than Nicolas Cage's genuinely moving performance as a man struggling to process his grief. It is this ingenious balancing act between ultraviolent horror and existential philosophy that makes it a great movie to watch alone. Mandy is the kind of flick you throw on when you're in the mood to go down a rabbit hole of cosmic proportions. Its themes are best mulled over in an almost meditative setting. 8. The House of the Devil the House of the Devil is slow burn at its finest. In need of some quick cash, a young woman finds herself with an almost suspiciously well-paying babysitting gig at a creepy, isolated mansion. What could possibly go wrong? Well, a lot actually, especially when the bodies begin to mount up. By combining a perfectly realised retro aesthetic and methodical pacing, director Ty West creates an experience that feels familiarly comforting. That is, of course, until it goes full on nightmare fuel. Like many on this list, it's the type of movie that works best watching alone because of its construction. It's unnervingly quiet for the first two acts, using its silence as a way to build tension and lower the viewer's guard for when the ball drops somewhere around the last 20 minutes or so. Patience is required, and it's just simply easier to be patient when there are less opportunities to not be. That, and I think anything said around a house when you're on your own, always adds that extra layer of scary. 7. The Evil Dead Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead is one of the greatest horror films of all time. It is perfect on every level, but for many reasons, sometimes it is a better watch on your own than with friends. We all know the story. A bunch of friends go to a cabin in the woods, and before you can say groovy, all hell breaks loose. Simple, but effective. The movie is unrelentingly terrifying. Raimi pulls no punches in his quest to make the viewer cringe and cower at the sheer brutality on the screen. Even by today's standards, The Evil Dead is extreme, and there is no better way to get that eerie vibe and tap into the good old days than by whacking this one on on your lonesome. If you really want to go the whole hog, then the remake is an even more gnarly watch you can use as an endurance test to see if you're really as hard with horror movies as you say you are. I certainly could only hack it once. 6. Get Out Meeting your significant other's parents for the first time is always awkward. It's just a natural part of any relationship. What isn't natural, though, is literally anything protagonist Chris endures during what will go down as one weekend he, and in turn we, will never forget. Wielding a sadly very real central theme, Get Out is the type of movie that can be rewatched over and over. A social comment both contemporary and innovative that is layered as hell, and ripe for picking up new details. Thanks to Peel's incredible on point writing and direction, the movie has a momentum that makes it just as entertaining as it is thought-provoking. Get Out is the perfect horror movie for any spooky occasion. Want something violent? The third act has you covered. In the mood to have nightmares later, that is what the sunken place is for. Put this one on any day or time and you won't have made the wrong choice. 5. Veronica 
Many have claimed this 2017 Spanish horror film is so scary they've been unable to finish it. While that may be a bit of a stretch, it doesn't take away from the fact that the movie will make you want to sleep under the covers for at least a few nights. Veronica follows a girl who, along with several friends, decide to make the not-so-smart decision of playing with a Ouija board during a solar eclipse. What follows is three days of unrelenting terror as supernatural forces turn her life into a living hell. Part of what makes this so effective during a solo viewing is the little things. If you pay attention, you'll start to see subtle hints and foreshadowing. There are scares aplenty in Veronica, but the most unnerving ones happen either in the background or are slightly obscured. The moment you notice them, you'll wish you hadn't. Maybe keep some holy water around for this one. 4. Kill List Cults, am I right? You can't live with them, and you'd much rather live without them. Ben Wheatley's 2011 genre mashup follows two hitmen who slowly begin to unravel as they realise that their current employer might be out for more than just blood. The movie is really three in one. It's one part family drama, one part hitman tale, and one part you'll wish it didn't go there folk horror. The thing about Kill List is that, similar to Veronica, there are little hints placed throughout the narrative as to what is really going on. For that level of foreshadowing to hit as intended, it takes the viewer's full attention. It requires focus, and if you give it that focus, you'll find yourself rewarded with a hair-raising feeling of pure terror. It's also a slow burn in the vein of the House of the Devil, and Wheatley uses many of the same methods Wes does to get under your skin. The difference is, when Kill List goes into full horror territory, it almost feels like it's a totally different movie. 3. Spring you might be thinking that watching a romance movie alone is a little sad. But hey, I'm not here to judge, just here to tell you there are a few exceptions, such as in the case of Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead's beautiful yet terrifying spring. After the death of his mother and assaulting a jerk at work, Evan decides to take a trip to Italy to clear his head and avoid a possible prison sentence. He soon falls in love with a mysterious woman who is far more than meets the eye. The reason this one is here is because of its overall tone and pace, but spring is a bit different. Most romance movies are meant to be watched with a significant other such as Love Actually or The Notebook. However, there are a select few that are designed for more of a single-person viewing. Basically, imagine Spring to be like the Before trilogy, but with a Lovecraftian twist. 2. You're Next Fun! If there is one word to describe this love letter to the slasher genre, it would be fun. A family gathering at a mansion in the middle of the woods is interrupted by animal mask wearing psychopaths. Little do they know, however, that one of their targets is more predator than prey. Above all else, Your Next is an absolute blast. It plays with and pays tribute to the conventions and tropes of the slasher genre while still feeling completely original. What's really great about it, though, are the characters, with Your Next having arguably one of the best final girls in all of horror history. Watching her tear through the hunters with raw savagery is a joy to watch. The movie is great to watch alone simply because of its playful nature and home invasion trappings. It wants to entertain the viewer and succeeds with flying colours. And it will have you looking all over your house for what you can use in a pinch should it come under assault, at the very least. 1. The Innkeepers the Innkeepers is a Goldilocks of a horror film. It's scary, but not too scary. Tense, but not too tense. Grim, but not too grim. You get the picture. Director Ty West again, of the previously mentioned The House of the Devil, creates an unnerving ghost story that hits all the correct spots. Just enough to make sleep come a bit harder without overstaying its welcome. Two employees with a love for the supernatural working at a soon-to-be-closed haunted hotel decide to use their last few days to try and make contact with the spirits inhabiting the building. They do, and it gives a new meaning to be careful what you wish for. The movie isn't attempting to reinvent the wheel, but it doesn't need to. It has the basic goal of trying to make the viewer want to flip on the light switch, but resisting the urge because it'd ruin the atmosphere. That straightforward, modest intention is what makes it work so well. The Innkeepers feels just right for any lonely night, and its quiet and small cast only goes to further reinforce spending close and personal time with the inn's ghostly inhabitants. And that's our list. Which are your favourite horror movies to watch alone? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I've been Ash over on social media at Ash Millman, and this has been What Culture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and come back again soon for some more spine tingling horror content. Thanks for watching.